A little over a week ago, we got an early access update from the developers over at Terror Worlds Entertainment, and I didn't do a video on this because I figured we'd be getting a patch in the last week here, but we did not. They even said on Friday, hey, no patch this week, we're sorry. So I do want to talk about this early access update letter real quick um, and mainly talk about the end of it. The, the, the beginning focuses hit on, hey, here's what we've done so far, and really Tell Worlds should be applauded for a lot of the things that they've done right here. Like, development of the game has continued unabated with around 78 patches. And those include obviously little minor hotfixes and the such, not the major um, branch updates or beta branch updates. And I think that a lot of people are pretty frustrated in this past week and a half or so not getting another beta branch um, and not getting the beta branch pushed into the main branch. And I can definitely see that. I definitely agree. My whole entire... Um, next step with my narrative campaign is pretty much on hold until that next main branch occurs and unfortunately with that main branch we will get a lot of those mods disabled because they'll have to update and everything that is kind of frustrating but there is some light at the end of the tunnel and last time we had a large gap in between patches we got a quite huge not necessarily content increase like they didn't pour in a whole bunch of new things to the game but they refined a lot of stuff we got a lot of things added and tweaked we got major reworks to um, all the factions equipment which was really nice so i'm actually even though this is taking longer every day that it takes longer i'm like well this hopefully just means something cooler is on the way now really what we need to do is take a look at some of the bigger things that they address in this development letter and i'll put a link to this in the description if you've already read it you've already read it and you see what's coming so feel free to shut the video down if you want not a problem there but um it talks about the con or the kingdom creation some of the new armor and new shields that have been added some of the new items that have been just brought into the game um and pretty much a lot of the balance and and uh, performance updates that have been just kind of trickled through in all the many patches and I guess the biggest one too here is also the creation of your sandbox kingdom not having to go through the main story so this just kind of summarizes a lot of those things that they're talking about but the big portion of it is at the latter portions of the um, letter here so it brings us to where we are at now but what about our plans moving forward well we are currently working on quite a large code refactor that is a huge term right there Car code refactor doesn't just mean, oh yeah, we're going to change a couple things with the code. It probably means that they're rebuilding a lot of stuff from the ground up. I know personally from talking to the internal beta tester that the development team has gone through a number of changes through the decade of the development of this game. So a code refactor probably means that they're putting things into a similar language format that the current developers are familiar with and can work with easily. Right now, every single patch tends to have a slew of really bad things that happen to the game on a bug database or on a bug level because there's a comma missing somewhere. And of course, that's code for you. But still, my point here is a code refactor is not a small undertaking. And when they say a large code refactor, that's even bigger. Um, I used to work at a software company, and when we did stuff like this, it was a pretty huge major um, both landmark and a halt to development for a lot, of, a lot of things. So what this will hopefully do is make the code easier for them to manipulate and create it so that anytime they do make any hotfixes or branch updates or beta branch updates, it's not so much of pardon my French, but a shit show. Uh, so many times when we get these branch updates, there's some sort of hidden small thing that breaks that we don't see um, until we get a year into gameplay that, oh, okay, now everyone's starving to death and all the cities are, are broke, so on and so forth. So um, I think that a large code refactor, if it takes longer, this is still early access. I'm cool with it. This is not the main portion of the game that's launched and we're not sitting here trying to basically say, well, this is full release. Why are you doing a code refactor now? This is when it's supposed to happen, so I'm fine with it. Take your time, do the thing you need to do to make the game better for us. Uh, however, though, with that being said, work on the next updates to the main branch and beta branches are underway, and we hope to release those very soon. So last time they said, hey, here's some things that we're working on, um, a lot of us kind of thought, okay, these things will come in the next three or four patches. Almost all of them came in the next patch after that. And a lot of those were AI tweaks, performance enhancements, uh, things to the equipment, or changes to the equipment of all of the units in the game, and they happened pretty immediately. So let's take a look at this big part, this paragraph, because it's really important here. 
or single player, our focus for the immediate future is still very much on stability and performance. But that's not to say that we, are, we aren't still working on other aspects of the game. Perks continue being completely overhauled and work progresses on new scenes, quests and AI improvements, additionally improvements to kingdom politics and voting that will give players more options, so on and so forth. Um, they're talking about this is a really huge one. Also, an incoming update is planned where character levels will depend on raw experience collected from skills rather than skill level increases. So to translate, right now, if you want to progress from level 16 to 17, or I think it's 15 to 16, it requires 75 skill points, meaning that set you, uh, your skills have to level up 75 times. Whatever skill, doesn't matter. It just needs to get 75 total levels across all your skills. They're going to change that so that it is going to be raw experience. That is so huge because most characters stall in the level 14 to 16, maybe even 17 range. So alleviating that portion where you're not shoehorning your character into that stalling point because you're focusing on the things you want to focus on is so massive. So you'll be able to actually increase your character's level by playing the game how you want to. Right now, if you're 16 or 17 and you're stalled out, you have to basically focus on a build that you didn't incorporate into your character when you created them. So that is a massive change. Another big one here is we also plan to make improvements to the crafting system, which will change how you progress and gain experience so that it's less grindy and will reward creativity to a greater degree. So I'm hoping this means that we'll get uh, an elimination of the stamina system. While I think it's a really cool, um, interesting thing, I feel like it's one of those things I was in a, a board meeting like, well, how do we prevent them from just crafting all the time? Well, we'll introduce a stamina system. Yeah, that's a good idea. Did not turn out the best way. Or maybe the stamina system is on a much smaller scale of rather than creating or smelting something costing eight stamina and creating something costing anywhere from like 10 to 15, it's a smaller one where creating something costs two and smelting costs one. I'd actually be okay with that. That's a fine middle ground for me. So I think that those are some really, 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 really big improvements that we could hopefully see in as early as the next beta branch, if not the one right after. Uh, these will, uh, another big thing too is the quest system. So the main storyline quest, quests will also be implemented in the near future. So what we have been playing has not been the full implementation of the quest system. These will include the quest to rescue your family as well as quests you, where you will work against the conspiracy. So that's why you're getting that conspiracy to stack up all the time. Finally, more dynamic quests that are generated in response to world events will continue to be introduced. Now with my conversation with the internal beta tester, he gave me a lot of hints as to what those quests might be. Uh, he's clearly on a different build from a different time. And what he was talking about, some of those quests, he was referencing all the major ones that you get from kings that are huge chest or quest chains that lead to all this relation building within each faction that you don't really get right now. It seems to be that those quest chains, from now my personal testing on it, seem to derail after the second step. The first step is always go find some troops for some garrisons, and the second step is another kind of fetch quest like that, and it just doesn't continue after that. So hopefully this dynamic change to questing will be a much needed route, because right now in the beginning portions of the game, you either do some arenas, you do some fighting with looters or minor, minor clans, and rinse and repeat. The quest system is not necessarily as transparent in telling you that if you don't do quests, these towns don't get more powerful and they constantly have to deal with things. Doing quests increase relation and it increases the power level of the notables and villages. And that's not really apparent in the game. So hopefully the quest rewards will be more dynamic and better and it will kind of encourage you to do more quests within the game. Also, we get a little uh, tweak here to multiplayer. We are currently readjusting and refining combat parameters while rebalancing stats, equipment, and perks. Additionally, the player report tool is currently in beta, and we hope to send that to the main branch soon to help players deal with problematic use, which is nice. Now, um, this is probably the largest part of this entire letter. Finally, we hope to be able to start releasing some modding tools with limited documentation in the near future. And um, from talking to the gentleman who creates the mod for the equipment sets, which he was so nice to actually kind of custom uh, tweak for me to, to do more of the faction guide videos that we've been doing on the channel. Um, he was telling me that right now modding is kind of like a blind process of, okay, I'm going to grow up around the code until I figure out what I think I need to do and then do it. 
and let's just kind of test that out and see what happens. Oh, I got the result I wanted. With the modding tools, it should hopefully streamline the process from every time we get a main and beta branch update to allow the modders to just quickly fix whatever they need to fix and push out the update. Or even so, build out better mods that, are, that can actually take advantage of the game's engine in better ways that are just simply not manipulating the code on whatever level they can um, and, get, and also get away with because there's so many launch issues with manipulating all that code. So. I'm really excited to see what happens with Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord. Um, I've clearly been loving playing the game, and I know a lot of you guys have either really liked it or you've really hated it now up to this point. You said, you know what, I don't want to deal with all these issues with um, the early access, I'll just wait till the game comes out. For me, I'm just going to keep playing the game in early access, I'm loving it so much. I've got like three or 400 hours into it now at this point, I don't even, I don't even remember anymore. And we still are going to be doing our next um, narrative campaign, in which case we're going to do a Sturgian playthrough with kind of a Kislev theme from Warhammer. And we will also be doing a stream campaign with the next beta branch update, in which case we'll be doing a Vlandia campaign using a lot of mods or whatever ones we can get away with on the beta branch. So if you would like to see those, um, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment below, all that kind of action. But when you subscribe, hit that little bell icon because you can turn on notifications because I do way too many game giveaways of Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord. And it's because you guys have donated over a thousand dollars worth of game keys to the community. So that's another thing I really love about this game is the, the community behind it is really awesome and the developers love what they're doing. They, they really enjoy pouring time into this and getting alongside the players and saying, okay, that's what doesn't work. Why don't you send me on over your, your save and we'll get down to the nitty and gritty and figure out what's wrong and we can try to fix it. So if you are very frustrated with Bannerlord, I understand. Hopefully this uh, letter kind of puts some things at ease for you. And I, I honestly think that the leveling system having that fixed in the crafting system are two very strong moves towards a better future with Bannerlord that is less grindy and a little bit more streamlined. So as always, guys, thank you so much for watching here today. Hopefully, again, you enjoyed this video about a little bit of an update. I know it's not some sort of awesome new patch like we were all hoping for, but I know not everyone read this letter. But that was the point of this video. So if it seems a little redundant and you've already read it and it's old news, I'm so sorry. Uh, I didn't mean to waste your time. But if you haven't read it, hopefully this gives you, like I said, a little hope for the future of Bannerlord and what we might possibly be getting in the next beta branch or the one right after. But again, as always, have a good one and take care.